everybody, today let's try to answer a question Does it make any sense to invest? We will go over three concepts First is inflation, then we will see what is exponential growth or compound interest and then we will speak about time value of money So let's kick off and let's try to answer if it makes any sense to invest. We will start with inflation. So let me zoom into inflation and let's start with that. So we as humans were able to invent something amazing. It's abstract concept which has physical representation as banknotes and coins. And this abstract concept is called money. So we invented a simple way how to express value of something. For example, value of car. Here the car is something that takes time to create. And there is a limited amount of cars that we can create on earth before we run out of resources. So Money allows us to simply express and transfer value. But what is this inflation? Inflation is caused by increased amount of money. Because we can quickly increase the amount of money. We can just create them literally from the thin air. But we are not able to as easily create more goods and services. And so if at the beginning we had this amount of money and then we doubled the amount of money, then the expression of the value of this car has to somehow reflect that now there is not just single but twice as big amount of money. And this is exactly what is happening inside the economy. If we increase the amount of money, then there is re-evaluation and then this car would be actually more expensive to reflect that now there is more money used to express the value of something. Obviously, this is not happening immediately. It takes some time as the new money spreading through economy. So inflation, uh, we can see it either as a growth of prices or we can see it as depreciation of the buying power of money. But we can also perceive it as a wealth transfer because someone who is able to create money or at least get as first the newly created money and then use this money to buy goods and services, which means effectively causing the repricing of goods and services after some time inside the economy. Then this institution or party is actually able to buy more because they are buying for old price, so they can buy more of the goods and services. And then if someone else after some time wants to buy the same thing, it's already more expensive. So this party is then able to buy less of this limited goods and services, which means it also works as a wealth transfer from one party, which is able to use as first newly created money from the party, which is able to use the same money later. So it also works as transfer of wealth from one to another. Today uh, we can hear many people say that national banks through quantitative easing are releasing money into the economy but in many cases or usually this is not true because during the quantitative easing the national bank is just trading or moving this money with commercial banks. So these 
new money are actually locked inside the banking marketplace. So they are they are not getting outside in between us ordinary people. So today the majority of the money is created by commercial banks through loans. So you just go into the bank, they will check your credit score and then they will provide you a loan. And when you use this loan, you are actually releasing this new money into economy. And when you pay off the loan, then these newly created money are destroyed. But obviously, because it's happening in many places of the economy and these places actually interact with each other, what we see is some depreciation of the value of money. Because if people are optimistic, then they are taking a lot of loans, so the amount of money inside the economy grows, which means that goods and services, which are rare, has to be repriced. And then we see that either buying power of money is decreasing or simply prices are increasing. And that's the magic of inflation. So inflation is one reason why we should invest, because if we just keep our money hidden, they are secretly depreciated by inflation. Okay, now let's move on on something which is called exponential growth. So what is it? Compound interest or exponential growth? For us humans, it's very difficult to imagine that something can grow exponentially. It's quite easy for us to imagine the linear growth rate by exponential. This is pretty difficult for us and we usually fail to imagine it. So what is, uh, how, how can we calculate it? We can calculate it using this formula, which stands for some final value, which is beginning value multiplied by the compound interest which we can get as one which represents 100% plus interest rate and then we actually make it power by number of periods. So for example if you want to compound something over five years the t would be five, interest rate would be interest rate that we select for example three and like that we can calculate the compound interest over three years. But let's do it practically. So if we invest 100,000 and let them grow with average interest of 8%, which is average interest rate, I mean long-term interest rate inside equities markets, then after five years, we will have 140,000. After 10 years is 197,000 and so on up to after 40 years it's 1 million and a half. Now please be aware that there is something called nominal and real interest rate. So what is the difference? Nominal interest rate is not taking into account inflation which means this 8% is actually nominal absolute value of interest rate. But it's not anyhow taking into account inflation. So what we should be really interested in is a real interest rate, which is nominal interest rate minus inflation. Again, let's try to do it on example. So if we invest 1 million, uh, again after 40 years, you probably wouldn't be surprised that uh, this number, if we multiply it by 10, it will start looking exactly like this, but that's given by the math rules. So after 40 years, if we let 1 million compound this 8% nominal interest rate, then we have 15 millions, which is pretty big sum of money. But what we have to realize that each year that we are compounding by 8%, there is also inflation and this inflation is eating the buying power of the money. 
So what we really should use is a real interest rate, which would be 8 minus, and if we say that inflation is in average 3%, we will get 5%. And now let's see what would happen. So if we compound 1 million using 8%, after 40 years we have this amount of money. And if we compound only using 5%, then after 40 years we have just 5 million and a half, which is like a huge difference. So this is the problem that we humans are not able to easily understand the exponential growth. That only difference of 3% can make this huge difference. And that's because, as we mentioned, as time goes, the exponential growth faster and faster. But what we see here is actually a nice example because after 40 years, if we let 1 million compound by 8%, we will really have 15 million. But the problem is that after 40 years, these 15 million would be able to buy us something that we can buy today just for five and a half million. So the real buying power after 40 years of these 15 million would be only 5 million and a half. So usually when we are presented with some offers, we are presented only with nominal interest rate, so it looks amazing. But what we have to realize that inflation depreciates the value of money, so the prices will be higher, so we will buy definitely less. And after 40 years, we can be sure that prices would be higher. So, so much about exponential growth or compound interest. And now let's speak about something which is called time value of money. So again, we have some formula here and this formula is present value equals future value divided by 1 plus r over n. You are probably not surprised that it looks very similar as compound interest. We just divided the formula with denominator. Or here it is denominator. So PV represents present value, future value, R is called discount rate, but we will get to that. And N again is number of periods. So what is this time value of money? So if we have today some money, let's say we have 100 of some money, some currency, and we have it today. And then we know that we will get 100 after three years. And now we would love to compare this 100 that we can use, we can invest it, we can spend it with the money, with the same 100 that we will get after two years. So obviously this is like apple and this is like a peer. So we can compare apple with peer, but ideally if we can either this move into future or this move back into the past and compare them. And this is exactly about what the time value of money is. So we are trying to return the future value back into the present. So it's like time machine. We are moving back into the past. And if we move 100 back three years, then we would figure out that today it would be 91.51. Or we can also say, I mean, this is in case we use the R as 3, so we are using the inflation, like average inflation 3%. And we are also asking if we return back with which interest rate this has to compound over three years to get 100 and we can even backward calculate it in a way that 91 
1.51 multiplied by 1.03 which is like 103 percent and so on and we can continue and we will get here 100 or we can move the today's value into the future and we can compound it with negative three percent which means it will be decreasing and we see that these two values are really similar so what is this even good for let's start with statement that money available today are simply more valuable than tomorrow want because we can spend today's money and we can invest them But what is this time value of money good for, really? So when we are trying to evaluate some investment, we can use this time value of money to evaluate it properly and make proper decision. So if I today invest 50,000 to buy tools I use to make money, and I expect this investment will make me extra 10,000 each year. And after three years, I can still sell the tools for 20,000. I'm just curious if I can anyhow evaluate this investment. So let's see. But before we begin, we have to set the so-called discount rate R. That represents interest rate I expect to get in exchange for the risk. So usually R is calculated as no risk or risk-free interest rate plus some premium what I want to make above the risk-free interest rate. The risk-free interest rate is usually calculated as the interest I can earn on US government bonds, which means I can take these 50,000 and just invest them into US government bonds. Let's say that now it's around 5%, which is anomaly, but let's stay with 5%. So if I just take these 50,000, invest into US government bonds, I can make 5% per year on them. So for me to make this investment here, I definitely want some premium above that. So what I want to, what I want above the, this risk-free interest rate to pursue such investment and we will be nice. So we will say that we only want to defeat the inflation, which in average is 3% or let's set it as 3%. So it will be 5 plus 3, which is 8. So now let's try to evaluate the investment when, I, when I'm ignoring or when we are ignoring the time value of money. In such cases, minus 50 because I invested them. Then I got 10,000 during these three years. And then I sold the tools for 20. So the, the final value is zero. But if we use the time value of money, and if we realize that money today are more valuable than money that we will make after some time, and we set, as we mentioned, discount rate as 8, then the formula will bear a little different amount, which is minus 8,384. So we see that if we make this investment, and if we assumed the 8% discount rate properly, then we will actually lose 8,000 by making this investment. And that's it. That's why the time value of money is good to know about. So does it make sense to invest money? It definitely does, because it helps us to defeat inflation we can use the amazing power of compound interest. And then it's also making sure that we are using the time value of money properly. 